Welcome to day two of common denominators. So yesterday we talked about what a common denominator is. So we said that common means that they're the same and that a denominator is the number on the bottom of a fraction. So today we're gonna talk about how you can get a common denominator for one of the fractions uh, so that both of the fractions have the same common denominator, I should say. You're only, we're only gonna have to change one of the fractions in today's cases. So we're gonna first talk about factors. So factors are the numbers that go into another number. So for example, if you have the number eight, the numbers that can go into eight are one times eight, right? And then two, times four. So these are the factors, one, two, four, and eight. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. All these factors, these are the numbers that can go into eight. So we're going to look at some fractions that don't have common denominators, one fourth and three eighths. So you can identify they do not, but we want them to have them. So what we can do is we, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you look at the bigger denominator, and see if the smaller denominator goes into it. Is the smaller denominator a factor of the bigger one? In this case, it is, right? Four goes into eight. Well, how many times? Four goes into eight two times. So to get our common denominator, we're gonna multiply one fourth times two over two, which is one. So we're not changing the size of it, we're just changing how it looks. We're keeping it proportional to our original fraction but now it will have a denominator that is common to this other fraction. So one times two is two, that's our numerator, and four times two is eight. And our other one was three eighths. We don't have to do anything to that one. And as you will see, now they have a common denominator. Now we could add them or subtract them or um, do some other things with them if we needed to, but that's really what we're working towards is being able to add them, add and subtract them. So let's look at another two fractions that do not have common denominators, but we want them to have common denominators. So what we're going to do is we look at the bigger denominator, it's 15, and we see that five goes into 15. So we only have to change one of these fractions. Five goes into 15 three times. So we're gonna multiply two fifths times three thirds. Um, two times three is six, two, or five times three is 15, and that one we didn't have to change, and now we have two common denominators, and this fraction is equal to this one. It's just another way of showing two-fifths is six-fifteenths, okay? And let's just do one last one, I'll give you one more example. So we have, these are not common. We have a nine and a 90. The 90 is the bigger one. How many times does nine go into 90? 10 times. So we're gonna multiply both of them by 10 over 10, and we're gonna get 30 over 90, and we had 40 over 90. So now they have common denominators. And we just keep in mind, we're not changing this fraction. It's still the same fraction it's the same number, it's just a different way of saying that number. So yeah, that's all we have for today, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.